Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Monaza. I'm consultant periodontist, implantologist and dental laser specialist. I hold M.Perio and M.F.T.S. degree from Royal College of Surgeons, Edinburgh and I did my master's in laser dentistry from Aachen University, Germany. I'm also a post care and graduate trainer in periodontology department and I conduct workshops for dental implants and dental lasers. This is an introductory video for M. Perio prep course and I welcome you all. Basically, if I recall the time uh, when I was preparing for my exam, the mistakes which I did, I see that the candidates are still making those mistakes and that motivated me to come up with this course so that I can highlight the mistakes uh, made by the students during the time of the preparation and during the exam. So, M. Perio prep course is a comprehensive course that will guide you and prepare you in the right way for M. Perio exam. There is no doubt that for this exam, you should be on the top of your theoretical knowledge. But more important is the implementation of that theoretical knowledge into your, into your daily clinical scenarios. And this is the most critical part of the exam that is judged and examined by the Royal College examiners. So to further explain this, I'm going to share a scenario which came in Imperio exam. Just have a look at that. So this is the clinical scenario I was talking about. A candidate will be with me who will doing this clinical scenario and I will act as an examiner. So let's start. Good morning, doctor. Yeah, uh, good morning, doctor. Yeah, please have a look at the scenario. Yes, uh, sure. Can you explain this radiograph? Uh, yes, um, uh, this is a periapical radiograph that shows the lower right four, five, six, and seven. And uh, the lower six has a grade three furcation involvement. Okay, so uh, looking at the radiograph and the clinical picture, uh, can you tell me any treatment options for this case? Uh, yes, uh, 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 the treatment option will be uh, tunnel preparation. Okay, is there any other treatment option? Uh, yes, uh, in addition to tunnel preparation, um, we can do a an open flap uh, debridement and uh, or uh, we can do a root resection okay so you said tunnel preparation root resectioning and open flap debridement so uh, yes. out of these three which treatment option you are going to choose uh, i will go with the first treatment uh, that i mentioned that is the tunnel preparation okay and uh, any evidence for this treatment? Uh, 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 I, I don't remember right now an evidence, but my reason would be uh, uh, the low cost of this treatment for the patient. Okay. Uh, can you tell me the steps for the tunnel preparation? Uh, yes. Uh, for tunnel preparation, I will first start by giving the patient local anesthesia. And mm -hmm. then I will uh, raise a full uh, thickness flap mm -hmm. and then I'll remove the bone and um, expose the furcation area and uh, the re and then reposition the flap apically uh, to expose the furcation area. Okay. Uh, now looking at the uh, scenario, uh, there is a grade 2 mobility. So, um, if you raise this flap, don't you think it will increase the mobility of the tooth? Yes, uh, there is a possibility that it will increase the mobility of the tooth. So, then what you should do before the treatment? Uh, yes, because the treatment can increase the mobility of the tooth. So, keeping that in mind, I will um, uh, do splinting. Okay. And... Uh, uh, you can also see in the clinical scenario that the patient has type 2 diabetes. So you are planning a surgery. So any questions you want to ask to the patient before the treatment or before the surgery? 
Uh, yes, uh, since the patient has type 2 diabetes, uh, I would like to ask the patient about how long he has had this disease and um, uh, what are the current medications he is taking and how uh, well his diabetes is under control. So how you are going to know uh, that uh, the diabetes is under control or not? Any specific test or anything you are going to do? Uh, yes, uh, I will uh, ask the patient to bring me the uh, the recent uh, blood test HbA1c which okay. gives us a three months control of his diabetes. Okay, and you said tunnel preparation. Can you tell me the advantages and the disadvantages for this treatment? Uh, yes, uh, uh, the advantage would be that it is a very low cost treatment and uh, it takes uh, less time. Uh, so, uh, not a lot of a time we need to spend on the surgery or the treatment of the patient. And uh, the disadvantage is that uh, uh, th because after this treatment, there is the possibility of post-operative uh, sensitivity of the teeth. Okay. And any complication associated with this treatment? Uh, yes. Uh, caries. Caries uh, is the main complication after this treatment. Okay, so you are doing the tunnel preparation. So can you tell me what should be the height from fornix to the alveolar bone? Uh, but uh, can you please repeat the question? I'm asking you that you are going to do the tunnel preparation, right? For this case. So uh, what should be the height from fornix to alveolar bone? Yes, uh, the fornix to alveolar bone. Yes, um, um, uh, it, it should be uh, a, a, a two millimeters. Do you think it's enough? Uh, yes, I believe that's enough. Okay. And uh, uh, how you are going to uh, tell the patient how the patient is going to clean this area? Yes, uh, after I do the procedure, uh, I will guide the patient about cleaning. Uh, I will uh, demonstrate to him how to use the interdental brushes. Okay. And uh, uh, what post-op instructions you are going to give the patient? Uh, yes, again, uh, the main instruction will be the cleaning the area and uh, use, use of the interdental brushes to clean the area. And uh, I will also guide him about uh, uh, using mouthwash. Okay. And uh, when you are going uh, to look this patient again, what will, when will be the follow-up? Yes, uh, the, for the follow-up, uh, I will ask the patient to come back to the clinic to see me in about 10 days to see the wound how, how well it is healing and I will also remove the suture at that time okay and uh, uh, what do you think what will be the prognosis of this tooth uh, prognosis in terms of uh, uh, can you please repeat what will be the prognosis of this tooth uh, well, because it, it has mobility, the prognosis uh, will be poor, or rather you can say that, I would like to say it not poor, but it will be questionable. So, you said questionable, right? So, yes. why it's questionable? Why you are saying this? Uh, um, I'm answering is based on the McGuire and Nunn classification. Okay, so sure. why you are saying this? Well, according to the classification, uh, there will be uh, more than 50% uh, possibility of uh, attachment loss. Okay. So, any other factors you will consider for the prognosis of this tooth? Or just uh, according to the classification, that's why you are saying. Any other factor you are going to consider or not? Uh, well, obviously, the mobility. Uh, because that will be a major factor that will affect the prognosis okay and uh, the um, uh, and the bone that uh, the amount of bone that is uh, over there in that area okay thank you very much doctor okay thank you thank you now i would like you guys to pause this video for a few moments and reflect upon the performance of the candidate okay now I'm going to demonstrate how you should uh, perform this scenario. Okay, good morning, doctor. Good morning. 
Yes, please. Uh, have a look at the clinical scenario. So, are you ready? Yes. Okay, doctor. Uh, can you please explain the radiograph? Yes, it is a periapical radiograph with a uh, grade 2 quality showing lower right 4, 5, 6, 7. There is horizontal bone loss around 50 to uh, 70 percent and there is an interradicular radiolucency in lower uh, right 6 uh, which suggests involvement of uh, grade 3 furcation but I will um, confirm it clinically. Okay. So, uh, what uh, treatment options do you have for this case? Uh, initially, I will provide the patient with oral hygiene instructions, uh, which include correct use of toothbrush, use of interdental brushes, use of mouthwash, and I will also control the risk factor as the patient has type 2 diabetes. Then, uh, I will give the patient non-surgical periodontal therapy, which includes supra and subgingival deprivement of pockets of 4 mm and above with the use of LA. And then, um, I will review the patient after 6 to 8 weeks. And on reassessment, if there are pockets it's above 6 mm then I will go for surgical options uh, which uh, uh, could be open flap deprivement uh, or tunnel preparation or okay. rotary section uh, or a hemisection okay so which uh, treatment option will you choose uh, for this case uh, my first treatment choice will be tunnel preparation as the involved tooth is mandibular and uh, the patient has good oral hygiene Okay, so um, any evidence do you have for this treatment? Yes, it's Nibali in 2019. The success rate of uh, this treatment is 70% in 7 years. Okay, and uh, can you please explain the steps of uh, tunnel preparation? Okay, I will give the patient local anesthesia, uh, raise the buccal and the lingual full thickness flap, then I will remove all the granulation tissue by root surface deprivement. And uh, mm -hmm. then I will uh, remove interradicular bone to expose the furcation area and to, wide, uh, to widen the furcation area. Okay. Then flaps are sutured in the apical position so that it is easy for the patient to clean this area and to expose the furcation area. Okay, okay, good. Uh, so tell me, uh, I have a concern that uh, as in the clinical scenario, the tooth has great tumor mobility. So if you raise the flap, don't you think uh, it will affect the mobility of this tooth? Yes, uh, there is a possibility that uh, the mobility will increase. So before the treatment, uh, uh, I will splint this tooth so that it will not increase uh, uh, the uh, further the mobility. Okay, um, uh, this patient also uh, this patient also has type two diabetes, so. Uh, what are the questions that uh, you will ask the patient before the treatment? I will ask the patient about the current HbA1c value so that uh, that will show me three months diabetic control. Uh, also, I'm going to ask about the current medication uh, the patient is taking, any complications he might have developed due to diabetes or any previous episode of hypoglycemia, especially uh, during the dental procedure. Okay. So, uh, what advantages or and disadvantages uh, do you think uh, uh, this treatment has? Uh, uh, as the advantages are concerned, uh, this treatment requires less time, uh, this procedure has low cost and there is no need of any endodontic or prosthodontic uh, therapy and it is easy for the patient to clean the area after the treatment. And uh, related to disadvantages, uh, there is a chance that a uh, patient might develop post-op sensitivity. Okay. And uh, any complications that is associated with this treatment? Uh, yes, uh, if the patient don't keep this area clean, then there is a chance that patient might develop post-op uh, caries. Okay, can you explain to me what should be the height from the phronix to the alveolar uh, bone? Uh, it should be the amount of space available should be uh, adequate so that the patient can clean this area easily with interdental brushes and it, sh it should be around 5 mm. Okay. Okay. 
So how is the patient going to clean uh, this area? Uh, I will give the patient uh, interdental brushes to clean this area. Okay. And uh, what will be your post-op instructions? Uh, I will educate the patient that uh, uh, he has to keep this area clean with the use of interdental brushes. Otherwise, there is a chance the patient might develop caries. I will also give the patient chlorhexidine mouthwash for four to six weeks. Uh, I will also prescribe the patient sodium fluoride rinses uh, point. Uh, to five person and also I will give the patient fluoride toothpaste. Okay, and what will be the follow-up plan for this patient? I will see this patient after seven to ten days for suture removal plus uh, I have to look at the wound how it is healing then I will see the patient after one month to check it uh, to check the patient clinically then three months to check the patient again clinically and then after six months to check the patient clinically plus radiographically. Okay, so now the treatment is done. You have given the instructions to the patient. And uh, what would be the prognosis of this tooth? Okay, according to McQuarrie and them, prognosis of this uh, uh, tooth is questionable because there is uh, more than 50% attachment loss. Uh, plus, I need to consider a few other factors for the prognosis of tooth. Um, of this tooth. Uh, that includes mobility, amount of remaining bone, root trunk length, divergence of root, root cones length, and uh, crown root rate show. Okay. Um, as you have mentioned uh, that the prognosis of this tooth is questionable, uh, and you have mentioned other treatment options before this one. Yes. Would those treatment options give a better prognosis? Why not choose them? Um, as this tooth has class 3 furcation involvement and uh, all the tre different treatment options will have the same prognosis. Uh, but uh, as the patient uh, has good oral hygiene, so and uh, after the treatment patient can maintain good oral hygiene in furcation area, that's why I chose tunnel preparation. Okay, okay, thank you, doctor. In this exam, the scenarios and questions asked by the examiners are not going to be straightforward. It's not going to be like 2 plus 2 is equal to 4 kind of questions. Like what is peri-implantitis, what is recession. Examiners are not going to ask such kind of questions. So with this kind of approach by the examiners and having very limited time like 7.5 minutes for short case and 15 minutes for long case, it is impossible to improvise your approach on the day of exam or to rethink how you are going to give the answers on the day of exam. The time for the exam will go so swiftly and you will have cases in a row that the exam will go like this. So in order to perform better, you have to prepare in the right way and Imperio prep course will solve this problem. So at the end, uh, just to summarize the Imperio prep course, we are offering two courses. Number one is the detailed comprehensive course, which include solved written uh, past papers from 2017 to 2023. Number two, I have provided the list of topics on the website. We will discuss those topics in the class and I will tell you how these topics will come in the short and the long cases and we'll, we will do all the questions related to these topics. Number three, at the end of the course, we are going to have a mock course uh, like the standard set by the Royal College of Surgeons Edinburgh and I will give a detailed feedback to each and every candidate. And last, all the study materials will be provided to the student. Second course is the mock course in which I will again take the just the mock exam uh, by the standard set by the Royal College and I will give the detailed feedback to each and every candidate. If you still want to know more details about the course, you can visit the website and if you want to uh, message me or you if you want to book the exam uh, or the course, you can uh, message me directly on WhatsApp. 
one more thing that this exam is career building expensive and uh, difficult exam so i had make sure to make this course as economical as possible and uh, at the end hope to see you soon and remember if you prepare in the right way you can succeed in the first attempt